When, one day, the history of the genesis of thought comes to be written, the following sentence by a distinguished logician will also stand revealed in a new light. The primary universal law of the knowing subject consists in the inner necessity of recognizing every object in itself as being in its own essence something identical with itself, thus self-existent, and at bottom always the same and unchanging, in short, as a substance. This law, too, which is here called primary, evolved. One day it will be shown how gradually, in the lower organisms, this tendency comes into being. How the purblind mole's eyes of this organization at first never see anything but the same thing. How then, when the various pleasurable and unpleasurable stimuli become more noticeable, various different substances are gradually distinguished, but each of them with one attribute, that is to say, a single relationship with such an organism. The first stage of the logical is the judgment, and the essence of the judgment consists, according to the best logicians, in belief. At the bottom of all belief there lies the sensation of the pleasurable or painful, in respect to the subject experiencing the sensation, a new third sensation as a product of two preceding single sensations, is the judgment in its lowest form. In our primary condition, all that interests us organic beings in anything is its relationship to us in respect of pleasure and pain. Between the moments in which we become conscious of this relationship, the states of awareness of sensation lie those of repose, of non-sensation. Then the world and everything is devoid of interest to us. We notice no alteration in it. Just as now anyone absorbed with interest in something will still not notice someone walking by him. To the plants, all things are usually in repose, eternal, everything identical with itself. It is from the period of the lower organisms that man has inherited the belief that there are identical things. Only knowledge educated in the highest scientificality contradicts this proposition. It may even be that the original belief of everything organic was from the very beginning that all the rest of the world is one and unmoving. What lies farthest from this primeval stage of the logical is the notion of causality. Even now, indeed, we believe at bottom that all sensations and actions are acts of free will. When the sentient individuum observes itself, it regards every sensation, every change, as something isolated, that is to say, unconditioned, disconnected. It emerges out of us independently of anything earlier or later. We are hungry, but originally we do not think that the organism wants to sustain itself. This feeling seems to be asserting itself without cause or purpose. It isolates itself and considers itself willful. Thus, belief in freedom of will is a primary error committed by everything organic, as old as the impulse to the logical itself. Belief in unconditioned substances and in identical things is likewise a primary ancient error committed by everything organic. In so far, however, as all metaphysics has had principally to do with substance and freedom of will, one may designate it the science that treats of the fundamental errors of mankind, but does so as though they were fundamental truths.